all for coming. I appreciate it uh, very much. My name is Michael Kellner. I'll try to keep this a little short because I know it's getting it's hot in here for me, uh, and I have to imagine it's the same for, for you. Uh, the idea of like an artist talk for me um, with the work present is a little bit of a, a, a rare experience. Most of the time, it's done with like slides or PowerPoint. Um, and so I can always kind of like fall back on that old thing of like, oh, you have to see the work in person. Like these, <laughs> these slides just don't do it justice. Uh, but you know, I really can't fall back on that here. Um, and but I, I would say that one of the things that about an artist talk, I, I love going to them. But um, and I, I would say every once in a while, the work is more meaningful to me after I've heard the artist talk. But often. I like walk out with a lot of questions, like, oh, don't they see in their work what like what I see in their work? Or there's like this, this disconnect, and um, so I'm really like hyper conscious about that, hence why I'm starting this way. Um, and the reason I want to say that is because um, I'm, your experience with the work is just as important to me as my experience with the work, and I'm not trying to set up any particular framework about how to see the work. What I what I'm going to try to do just really quickly is just pull like one thread. Through, and not to say that this is necessarily all that the work is about, but it's just a, like a fragment of what the work is about. Um, so one of the things that I'm interested in is the way that um, uh, work kind of bubbles up again and again, and like will bubble up and be really important to me and then go dormant. Um, and I've been making artwork, I use this term very loosely, professionally um, since grad school for uh, 11 years now. Um, and so it's been nice to have a little bit of distance because I can see how things tend to sort of cycle through from time to time. Um, and so the original idea that I kind of had carried around for a long time that I wrote about in my artist statement was being at the University of Cincinnati for grad school and being in the DAP building, which is a Peter Eisenman building. And the first time I was in that building, I got lost. I, I found it impossible to navigate. It, like, it looks very cool. Uh, and I think it's really interesting, but the, it's like almost like being in a fun house, like the hallways get smaller. And I don't know if this is 100% true, but I heard this secondhand, and I think a reliable source, who knows. Uh, but that the building when it first opened was actually making people sick uh, because of the carpet that was in there initially. There were people getting migraine headaches, they weren't able to stay in the space for a long period of time. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting that the building could have that effect on somebody. And so, um, what, what I was really interested in at that time was the way that the building went from being this like formal structure that I couldn't navigate to all of a sudden feeling like mine in a very short period of time. Like it felt like it belonged to me and to my friends that I was there with. And then the moment that I graduated and we were kicked out of our studios, then that feeling kind of went away. That was just some place that I was from. And it slowly over time sort of accumulated its formal quality again. And so that sort of back and forth relationship was what I was interested in. So that's there, and it's been lying dormant for a while. And then a couple years back, I stumbled upon this book by um, the philosopher John Rockman. It's called Constructions, and it's an architecture book. Um, and he writes about Eisenman's projects. And it was just like, you wrote about it the last time I was in school, um, but I hadn't read it, and I'd never heard of it. And then all of a sudden, it was like, I found the book, and it was like, it was waiting there for me. And one of the things that he talks about with Eisenman's idea is that, not always successfully, but one of the ideas that he has in a lot of his work is the idea of uh, presentness, which is the idea that like uh, you're giving the, the the person who's in the building a little bit of freedom, not like not a blank check, you know, for freedom, but a little bit more to like sort of flow in a space in a different way than maybe a typical sort of architectural structure. And that idea to me, like this, that tiny bit of freedom, is what I'm really. Um, what I was really interested in with all with all of this work. So um, the sort of uh, conceptual tie between all of these is um, the, there's Dwell Magazine, which is a high modernist, uh, like sort of interior architecture design sort of magazine um, that's cheap, you know, that you can get really easily. Um, they published an issue called The Best Homes in America. And uh, I was really interested in that. this idea. is like, how do you even quantify something like that? And um, I, there was a point in my life where we actually subscribed to Dwell, like, and it was, a, it was an aspirational subscription. It was like, this is what I want, you know? And that was, that feeling was real. Um, and I was, and then, um, and I actually had the money to kind of make it happen for a little while. And then we made some life decisions that changed that. And, um, and so then all of a sudden it's just like, okay, so why? Like, why this particular stuff? Like, why, you know, what is interesting to me about this particular thing? I could talk about that for a while, but what was, 
um, interesting to me about this particular magazine, besides the sort of like the quantifiable aspect, is that I didn't feel sort of trapped by it anymore. And so I always like that Alan Caprock quote that it's like, he says, art is um, ad hoc constraints follow rigorously. And so I figured like, it's like, okay, I'm gonna set up the parameters for this particular project and we'll just see what happens. So um, with these here, there were 13 homes featured in the magazine. And so each drawing is the, the collapse of all the structure, the structural information for the drawing. And then the color was chosen by, one of the things I was interested in about this particular magazine is that at the end of each house, they had four to six objects that you could buy. Like you could make your house like this. And so I used Photoshop too to sort of, uh, as a color picker, to figure out the color proportionality and then use those colors to sort of code the drawings um, based upon the like, sort of marketing, sort of consumer culture thing that gets generated. And that was an interesting thing for me and um, it gave me a lot of time to think as I was working through these. And, uh, and so I was like, okay, what, how else can I fracture this magazine? How else can I take it, its flatness away? How else can I make it a little bit uh, more playful for me? And so um, the rest of the four drawings in here, um, the, the one on the left wall is um, all the furniture uh, in the whole magazine. Uh, the one on the right wall here, the front one, is all the windows in the whole magazine. Uh, this is all the lights. And then the bottom one is all the exterior spaces. And uh, what I, what I like, um, they're all hand drawn, and I like having my hand in them because it's one, once again, it's that, like that tiny little bit of freedom, you know? Like, I'm a type of person that would, would buy well, you know? Like, I, there, there are certain sort of like traits that you can pin on me, the same way that people was just talking about like algorithms and Google sort of like picking behaviors. Like, I'm very conscious of the, that that can be done to me, but I'm also interested in those slight ways that I vibrate, like kind of off that, that course. Um, and I would say that, this show is an attempt to kind of show a little bit of that, that vibration. So it's one fragment. Um, but I think that would be good enough because I see people fanning themselves. So if anybody has any questions, uh, please um, feel free. I'm happy to talk. You tossed off the verb collapse. I have no idea what that means. Okay. Did you say you collapsed the drawing. Yeah, so I did a, just a line drawing of each. At first, I did a line drawing of each page. Like, so just, you know, flip open the magazine and I would just do it. And then um, I took all those line drawings from, like, one house, like uh, Walter Burface's uh, Haggerty house, and then drew them all on top of each other. Uh, so it's all, like, you get all the sort of linear descriptive information um, layered on top of each other. Does that? Yeah, I think I can do it. 